All right. We have a beans here. And we will continue our almost Christmas business. I have the hat right here. Because it's honestly a sensory nightmare to have on my head. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of heavy. Um, all right. Let's continue. A game we've already played. <laughs> or a section of the game we've already played. A day three trial. December 27th, 10 a.m. Dis district court, courtroom number three. I, have, I never remember if we're in like, oh, this is the same courtroom I'm every time. Or not. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edward. I'm still Santa Claus. The defense is ready, your honor. <coughs> I do still need water for this voice. <laughs> Clear the mucus. I ate too many sweets earlier. Oh. Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, well, no opening statement, so... Not so fast, Judge! I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking! Uh, right, of course. Prediction. I, I think I think <laughs> Von Karma's voice will morph into like an evil witch, squeaky evil witch. <laughs> Today's trial will end three minutes from now. There you go. That's that voice is a little easier. <clears throat> order, order, Mr. Von Karma. What is the meaning of your statement just now? Ah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I'll, I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Boatman. Boatman goat. Witness, state your profession. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I am the proprietor of the restaurant at the Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. Like, you can't be this fucking stupid. <laughs> the night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh yep. Yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Obviously, we raise an objection. There, that's a good spot. Objection. There's the beans. Oh no, she jumped down. Okay, no, oh, my, my floor is messy. <laughs> Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Uh -uh. <laughs> so 
stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. <laughs> yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Okay. Mm, well, uh... I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? I was like, mixing up judge and caretaker voices. My, er, uh, memory. Sure. Your Honor! The witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. I... Uh, I still hate this one. I still hate this. He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three years ago. Or three days ago. Oops. He can testify. Very well. <clears throat> Let's... Attack the earbud. Come here. Come here. Oh, I'm sorry. Please, that's the only way I can pick you up. Ah! Chaos. Chaos. Look at you. What happened here? Okay. Cat. Here you go. You wanted attention. You wanted attention, and now you're getting it. So let's hear this this testimony then, shall we? Witness. We hold you by the booty, so you will be held. Ah, that's my ear. Ah. Okay, she likes to eat my hair. She can she can do that if she wants. <laughs> it was the night at the twenty fourth, just after midnight. Yep. <laughs> Why are you grabbing my face? Ow! That was my face. With claws. I was in the restaurant where I rent boots as usual. <laughs> okay. You're vanished. Then I heard a bang, and you? When I looked out the window, I saw a, a boat just a floating on the lake. Stop spinning wires. <laughs> then I heard another bang. I still have this little fix camera here. She grabbed my face with her claws. <laughs> then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Okay, what, what did he say? He said he'd remember by now. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Oh! Uh-oh. He hit the popcorn bucket. I got a big-ass popcorn bucket for Christmas, and I'm so hyped. Most of it's caramel corn. <coughs> There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. She needs to get up here. She's like, Come here. Come here. I have laser pointer. Laser pointer. 
Assist. 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 She's just staring at it. Ugh, so lame. <clears throat> There's Santa. <laughs> there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing to question about the witnesses, my witnesses' testimony. Uh, fine. Just flip it this way. Okay. There we go. No need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now! He hasn't even spoken. He's barely spoken. Uh, yes. Mr. Wright? Cross-examine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. What are you saying? Hmm. Very well. You may begin. Just autism screeching. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed! I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross examine the witness. Thank you, Santa. It's a Christmas miracle. It was the 24th. It was the- wait. It was the 24th. Just- oh wait. No, we're just doing this. Hold it. <laughs> just after midnight, you say? Uh, yep. Just around then. Are you sure? <laughs> Pretty sure. Uh, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Okay, motherfucker, you're just, just gonna... I asked him and he remembered! <laughs> okay, that's convenient. Isn't that right? Who can testify that? Well, I guess Polly could. Cat, stop, 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 stop. Attack this thing that I'm playing with, with you. You little poo puncher. You little poo puncher. Use, use that as your next insult. You big fucking poo puncher. And it's like, you're like, what? <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> that that's, that's not good enough for our court of, court of law. Just right. What exactly is not, not good enough? Uh, uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A <laughs> uh, parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, cutie boy. Keep the prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. <clears throat> Alright. So... Bird cannot testify. <laughs> Can't, you know. Then a bang. <laughs> He's hitting her with a stick now. <laughs> okay, 
can see her. Ha ha! Ha ha! It is a cat. It's a cat. Oh, it's on the ground. A cat is on the ground. <laughs> so where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Alright, buddy. Are you certain? Uh, uh, uh yep. <clears throat> Good! Continue! So, was there someone in, in the boat? How many someone was in there? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Uh, yep. But you couldn't see them. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yep. At the time, that is. At the time. So you heard two gunshots total? Uh, yep. That's what Lana said in her testimony yesterday. Way to go, me. I met my standing goal. <laughs> While sitting. It's because I've been playing with my left arm, which is where my watch is. I'm gonna go me, my heart rate's been up. <laughs> by your window? Uh, yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the, the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Wait. Oh. The sound of voice makes me yawn for some reason. I have a bad feeling about this. I can't believe he's that that man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Okay. <laughs> uh, are you sure? Okay. Uh oh. D Dad! Papa! Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead. As he was walking by, too. I always thought that. <coughs> the trick courtroom drama. Oh god, all the dogs are going crazy. Witness! Are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That edgy Edgeworth boy! This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured 
me into cross-examining, so he could set me up for a fall. I mean, what the fuck? It's, I mean, it's our fucking job. Beans, what are you doing? Stop trying to do it. Escape, I love you. I'm trying to play with you. She just was not paying attention. Stage has been set. Oh, yes. I can just this now. I can now bully her. Look at you, primal instincts. Look at you and your primal in instincts. So tisk tisk tisk. <coughs> Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is star is glaring at us. I better act quick, or this trial is gonna be over. Objection. <laughs> Your Honor, he proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? showing firing it with his left hand come here let me love you okay oh no you want oh you want me sneaky you want, you want to go under <laughs> I that's gonna mess up okay you can oh my cables are down here She's attacking it from under the bed, which is very cute. You just will have to visualize it and I'll get to see it. Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. Uh, <laughs> but he didn't. Didn't. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. Objection. Objection. Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth sa said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have! <sighs> Look at this cute little toy. It's got little diggly pop. Oh, oh reindeer. <laughs> if he were telling a, a lie. <laughs> Mr. Wright! In a court of law, ev the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Uh. Okay. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, oh, kitty, kitty. I'm, I'm fishing. Oh, oh man. It, it's like fishing for froggy. <laughs> Instead of fishing for, fishing for beans. Well, I only had a nibble. Uh, are you sure? 
To be honest, I probably needed to set up a little better. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. Please! Can you hear me, sis? Please! We need your help! Nick needs you! Uh oh. Son of a bitch. My. Stupid insulin pump since I just expired. Ouch. The tape hurts worse than the rest of it. <laughs> Nick needs you! Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Oh, Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Why are we letting him get away? <laughs> the court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is, in ex is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. Uh, what? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. Uh oh So what would happen after my birthday? Oh she's up, she's up, she's up, look at you all. Oh. Having this kind of toy with her has been great, so she stops biting me, but I can still mess with her. Because she seems to like roughhousing a little bit. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. But. Wh wait! Wait, who is that? Was it? Me! Huh? What? Oh, me. <laughs> Larry! <coughs> Larry, our knight in shining armor. How's the ride? Uh, what are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I was... I was there in the park. The night of the murder. Uh, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today... I remembered it. Remembered what? The, the gunshot. I heard it too. Uh, order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So, you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. There's something amazing. I was sitting there in the audience listening to, to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Uh, anyhow, I can't, 
just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's it's just not right. We got some some lacy vibes here. It's just not right. You know. <laughs> Or maybe Lacey has some Larry vibes, I don't know. <laughs> Larry, Lacey, they're, they're very close in name. But I'll testify. Let me testify. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. You're an old man and this has never happened. That's surprising. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry has given us one final chance at this. She's right. We can, we can trust Larry at this point. If only if it wasn't Larry. If only it was, if it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. No, okay. You're like, where are you from? Your Honor. If there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here. Right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, Every witness should be heard. Ho, ho, ho. What? What is this? There's color everywhere. What's this? There's, there's light, light, blah, 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 blah. I forgot the words. What is this? Christmas town? I would drop my previous verdict of guilty. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. No. Oh, Judge, you're getting your, your groove back? The real spirit of Christmas? Jesus, I guess? <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> Supposedly it happens in September. Sometime. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll have a big old stamp of... I don't know. But, it's a good day to just kind of honor family and stuff. Hanging out with people. Also, just feeling kind of sappy because... It was the first time in like over a decade that all like six of us, oh my god, <laughs> of us siblings in my family were in the same room in the same place together. So, Christmas miracle. <laughs> From miracle also coming from also unfortunate events but also not so unfortunate because they're doing fine they're doing great so no what the court will adjourn for a five minute recess after that we'll hear this new witness <coughs> Court is adjourned. Alright. He's like, I still need to take a potty break. <laughs> December 27th, 10 
12.28 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew. That was too close. I'm sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew out into the, into the lake. We were there, I think. Oh, right. Yep. And he found the balloon and the air tank that, that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? Huh? <clears throat> huh? You say something right. There it is. Yeah, uh, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? I mean, he was almost declared guilty. <laughs> Just outright. If it weren't for Larry. Like, it was out outright if it were for Larry. And now he has to depend on his. Imagine someone you knew from fourth grade <laughs> comes to, de to your defense at a murder trial and you haven't really, you like maybe have spoken once or twice since the first semester of fourth grade. <laughs> like they've been friendly, but you also know them to be a little shitbag. Oh man, I'm just loving this. <laughs> it, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Dumbass! Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in, in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. Yeah, he just is a dumbass. But you, you're also never as like observant as you'd think in a stressful situation like I would you always see um as let's players get frustrated when they're taking a long time doing something for a game I'm like no it, it took me this long to and like normal playthrough so just I don't know chill sometimes you can edit it out if you're worried I see. Yep. Tangent. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run at perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepare witnesses. Perfectly com complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had ha, ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. Yep. But like I guess yeah, Larry does have a consistent enough mischievous streak 
but also like definitely he's like he's larry's chaotic good um emphasis on both i can like you, you know he's he's a he's a good guy but he's he's very chaotic so what are you getting at it's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. <laughs> okay, why well, don't. Why would I say this? Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. <laughs> Okay. A few minutes later. Court is now back in session. Witness. Please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right. Leave it to me. Please, Larry. Don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I er, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back, at, back in at the rental dock, shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked down over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Oh? Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Santa. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little, I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? <laughs> there were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Uh, um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh. It was after 11 when I went out in the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast is clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. Yeah, we, when we found out who Gordy is, it's part of the hand of the steel samurai going into the water. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. 
I was out searching for about an hour. Uh, I, I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not like, I'm not some sort of human sender, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. So, where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Oh. No boat. No boat or hoe on this lake tonight. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everyone just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay. No problem. That's just the most important part of this case. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick. Hmm. <coughs> it was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? 
Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. We're, we're right, like, literally above our house as power lines. Don't fucking put up fireworks here. <laughs> Don't do it. Like, there's a public park that's right behind us as well, but right above our house between our property and the park are power lines. <laughs> Christmas anymore. It's not New Year's. So you, something. Uh, I'm a witness. See, I'm like a customer here. <laughs> <coughs> so you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Larry, Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Eh? Not sure? C how could you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, may have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something... else? <coughs> My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Yeah, noise cancellation. Ooh, excuse me. Order, order, and stop that booing. M Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah. Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? <laughs> I don't know what happened with that voice. I listen to the, my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? I don't listen to the radio anymore. I just listen to podcasts so I know what I'm going to be listening to. <laughs> hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? <sighs> Ugh, sorry. The judge makes me yawn. Continue. Your Honor? Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please, give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right. Leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. <laughs> <coughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to the, the, your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. <laughs> Judge! Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough. It's difficult to believe his testimony. Objection. Wait, Your Honor. 
The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? Oh my god, the judge. An announcer. The guy who says, says things on the radio. <sighs> Hold on. Anyway. What this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. <laughs> Alright, Larry. Oh. So you turned on the radio? Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? <laughs> Larry. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you are listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Ouch. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? <laughs> Real booming loud? Yeah, you know? And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going outside at, at all. Can you prove that? No. No, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was taking it, talking it about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Okay. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what the radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma. Er, indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why. Ugh. You should care. We should care, your honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer say when he heard the gunshot? Just when she said, just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you, sh oh, whoops, are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Kramer was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. Oh, if only you knew. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there's one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened.
Are you, wait, did I do this? Are you sure? Of course I am. Of course I am. Oh wait, oops. Why would you take it from me? She took it. I have to get re comfortable. Oh, the worst. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? The, the DJ said, Hey, it's almost Christmas! When he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And... Almost... Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. <laughs> but you should have heard the gunshots after midnight this photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera oh 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas day This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The, the two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Sus as fuck. Wha what? Hmm. He is, indeed, he is quite sus. Well, Mr. Wright, 
What do you think about Mr. Butts' claim? You heard the gunshot before midnight. Larry is right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Right here, bitch. Look at this photograph. Every time I do a mix, my lamb. Oh, this was taken by our witness yesterday. Miss Lana Hart with our with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December twenty fourth, eleven fifty PM. Oh Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor. The real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. Well, what do you mean? Your Honor. This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha. Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. And that is why this photograph was taken. In other words... When Larry heard th that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is the fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, <laughs> that night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Huh. Why would this be? All the kitty Right there. this be? <clears throat> Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? <clears throat> there is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why? The witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Oh. <clears throat> There's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence. <clears throat> uh, I mean, we have Lana's deposition.
Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll say a lot of... Oh, what the heck? Stop! Stupid. Wait, is that it? Is that a smirk I see? Oh, uh, wait. Whoopsie! <clears throat> ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, Mr. Wright, <laughs> there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise was indeed a gunshot? my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who heard, testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, when, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. <laughs> order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly! If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots, separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, and another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why? I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshot separated by 25 minutes? Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I need some water. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually gonna take a quick bath and break. So, we'll find out what's wrong in a few minutes.
We're back. And better than ever. Okay. <sighs> Beans wanted to hang out somewhere else. And I, here's my new bean. Very soft. It's got my Christmas stuff on it. And a puppy. This is very soft. At least for now. <laughs> it's one of those blankets, you know? So what's wrong, Nick? So I have it. I have it. Huh? Okay, comfy. Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes! If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. N no, no, Phoenix is on board, and Maya's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you just watch and let me know if I say say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick! Your Honor. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Bean. She's crying at the door. So you finally realized the truth. Slaps. I give her the booty slaps. Okay. There could be no other murderer here than Ms. Miles Edgeworth himself. <laughs> nope. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the, that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. What? Beans, you can't? Okay, fine. meowing at me. I'm like, okay, I guess you have to go to the bathroom. And she just runs in and out. I'm like, child. My child. Why must you? I admit, it is a hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. Midnight. 
What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain. It is Edgeworth and Hammond, the murderer and Hammond. Edgeworth is on the boat, for sure. Edgeworth and... Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. Yes, I believe you are mad. That is that. Oh wait, whoops. <laughs> okay, nope. <laughs> it wasn't. Edgeworth and the murder. Since clearly Edgeworth was on. <laughs> of course it was Edgeworth and the murder! Okay. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Hammond's, Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name? Right, it's... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. <laughs> you don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Oh, she's going to hear her crying again. Why are you crying? I don't I don't know what else you'd expect. When you leave the room, I gotta close the door. When you get inside the room, I gotta close the door. Okay? I can't leave it open. I can't leave it open. Everyone else is trying to sleep. <laughs> it's she just wanted to be held. Oh my baby. So, the caretaker of the boat shop? Why? Why are you being like this? <laughs> it's dramatic. So, where did, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. He didn't shoot him on the lake. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone. May I suggest that the real scene of the crime 
of this crime was not on a boat? W what? Well then, where did the murder take place? the boat shop where he lives that way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime I recall Larry's test uh, recall t Larry's testimony if you will why stop 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 being a poopy poo, a poo puncher. That's what you are. But that night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. Oh. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would... What? Why are you making weird noises? What? What? <laughs> He's just giving me this bug eye look. I'm like, what? What? Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'm not letting you in again. I'm not letting you in again. Do, maybe she wants to play? Do you want to play? Maybe. Okay. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Are you sure sure about that? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might be able to I might just be able to figure this out. Oh, look at who we have. Oh, she found a different toy. Come on. She found she found a mousy. So that night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond. Or the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to be to his boat to his shop. It was saying he was called Robert Hammond. I'm like, no. He called him Robert Hammond. Jesus Christ. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. 
Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol in the boat? The boat shop caretaker. Oh. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Oh. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't need to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us to create a witness. <laughs> So I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer did know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on his body. On the body. Oh. oh. Hands <laughs> Oops. And threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. This is what happened, Santa. And this is why my client shouldn't be on the naughty list. So these are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff? Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? <clears throat> what Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. Yeah. He has 
must be to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your, your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He, has, he isn't at the boat shop either. What? Yeah, you fucking let him leave. What should I do? And what should I do? Well, find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. He must atone for his naughty list crimes. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. It goes without saying that we, I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to the to this trial. I want him and I want to know and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. <laughs> so December twenty seventh, one twenty two PM District Court. Defendant Lobby number two. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even though- even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edward. Um, Mr. Edward? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. I have a huge mega crush on you. <laughs> Edward? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Mm, I can't make up my mind. Is he, are you going to finally confess your love, Edward? What's this about, Edward? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Okay, so... I feel like I can stop doing this episode now. Especially since I've already played it. Since we got to do the almost Christmas. Was, er, was isn't Christmas. So, we're gonna continue from this file. File 7. 
for the rest of the time, but we're going to, I'm going to switch the stream label to a different game because I have a very momentous, very worked hard project. I'm going to switch to Birth of the Lot. Oops. What the heck? Okay, there it is. No! Okay. Okay. Updated the stream label. And so I have three Korok seeds left. And I know exactly where they are. <laughs> 